Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So with your request to release our old survival world from Season 1, this is what this is. So I'm just going to basically take you around the map, show you all the ships, discuss about them, and just talk about what the purpose is with them when they were built at the time, as well as releasing this map on the workshop. So first of all, we are here in our base, and we are in Henry's sort of tomb, you could say. We managed to take him with us in the last survival episode, but this is where we laid to rest some other things. Now, one of the questions is why the, why is there a Swedish flag in our place? Is is there anything? Is, it, is that related to anything? Well, Tattoo is Swedish, and he decided it was an interesting idea, and that caused confusion for many episodes. Next to us, we have a small little cross. Now, this cross resembles that guy that we killed when we first came here. When we first came here. The base was quite a different place, this hit wasn't here, and the gummy bear ship was over there, and basically this guy came at us with an angle grinder, and we had to put him down sadly, so I'll take you on the tour of the rest of the base anyway. So the reason we left this place as well is it's just started deforming crazily, and the collision course with another asteroid just added to the situation. So if we move into here, you can just see the real state of the deforming of the the actual station. You just see it's horribly wrecked. I mean, we're not doing this. This is purposefully done by this whatever's happening to it, because we're not actually touching it at all. It's just dipping, breaking away, and tearing away. Maybe it has something to do with um, being connected up to the asteroid. But we'll move up up here. So you may notice there's no doors on this base, because most of them were removed by the um, angle grinding maniac. But we can move through here and then off into here is Tazu's hangar where he blew up this side of the asteroid to make himself a little bit of an entrance to the actual facility. So down here he has his own personal refinery and area that leads up into the base. Unfinished, like a lot of our projects, but still pretty damn interesting if he would have got it finished in time without the base having all these problems. So in here is our medical respawn room. It took us quite some time to get these activated. And it was quite problematic because we were feared that we'd be dying quite a lot. So in here is where we found this command station where there's a few rebuilt seats that we can use to charge ourselves. Now onto here was originally probably some sort of storage room but we never decided to finish it. There was just too much to do and we wanted to build our little vessels and explore the area. So there's a few crates remaining there. Also Sage's cryo station. Now, if we push through here, and on the left, this is where we originally found Tazu, and we found him in this cryopod. Now, these cryopods are basically custom models done by Sage, and he's got videos up on his channel that actually show how you can use them and stuff, and he's got them all available to you, as well as this beautiful reconstruction machine that actually has a few different stages of build. Now, we use this to reconstruct Tazu after his burned corpse was, was horribly brought in here in a in a hail of mess so I'll move back through here now now we're coming up to the other end of the base and this was a jail cell that was built probably just to house Tazu really because it's, it's, it's the best place to put him in most situations but yeah it's got a nice little window view and works quite well now if we move on we have a final storage room now in one of these containers here there was a ridiculous amount of rocks that we, we found but we just we kept losing it for some reason it just kept vanishing it was like the mysterious pile of rocks that we could never find now this way leads up to Henry's hangar and you can probably wonder why a lot of these objects are incomplete but in survival it takes a lot of resources to build things and we simply didn't have the resources at the time to finish it so this is where Henry basically used to park until he was um, horribly destroyed in a, a horrible smelting accident but we'll continue coming up here so we've got the wrecked red ship I've not concluded I've not included the um, half-built red ship that Sage was working on all the Henry version of mine just due to it being incomplete and I thought when it's complete then we'll release it then. So up here is the flying saucer that Tazu actually took apart in the last one and ended up flying off. But this was used for many of our building areas for many of our small fighters. Now talking about small fighters and ships that were featured in the episode I've got them up here in the hangars. So from the first ever ship that I built personally and many people hated this ship simply because it was it was wonky, it was offside, but I, I like a ship that's a little bit funky. And um, that was basically it. So we've got two drills there, and it had a cargo container on the back that helped us do a lot of building and work in deep space. And it got us off our feet when we started to mine, and got us into that sort of new age of technology. 
Now, the Bumblebee, or the Honey Badger, or whatever you wanted to call it, that the previous ship was in there, then got refitted by Tazu, and he did a great job of refitting it. He turned it into a grinding and welding ship, so you can see what he's done there. He's just made, like, two sort of pods, a bit similar to Henry, Henry's engine bays, but instead he's put actual grinders and ejectors on the back, as well as a crate, so we can just throw out and get building with that thing. Now, that didn't last one episode, sadly, because um, Tazu had an incident with it. Now, this is the ship we actually found at the base. Uh, we referred to it as the Gummy Bear ship, just due to the little stripy line on the yellow paint job. It was actually a rather good ship, but the problem was it was incomplete and it didn't have much power. So you've got the crates on the side that were, were, were quite quite efficient. It was, qu it was quite good, but just didn't have enough power to do anything, as well as incompleteness. So we move on to the next ship. Now, this is the Gummy Bear when it was overhauled by Sage. And he did an absolute great job. He, he refitted it to mine, put three drills on. We replaced a lot of the cargo containers with an internal storage. And we also had this wiring wired up so um, that it can actually eject all the items into the machine to process it at the refinery. A very nice reconstruction. And it was a lot more faster and more stable just due to his repacking of the engine power at the back and the, re new, the new large generator. Now, if we move on, we have Henry. Now, he, he was and still is my favorite little ship that I have built for a very long amount of time. Now, a lot of effort went into him by me. I really tried to think him over. Like, I wanted to spread out the engines as much as possible. Like, if one engine went down over there, I've still got my pod on the other side to keep it going. And I, I put these little wingtips just as fancy looks. I mean, we don't really do anything too nice. And he's also wired up fully inside, so he can actually be fully used. Two rocket pods and the minigun underneath that I always forget to mention. So a really nice little ship. Now if we move on to the next area, we have Tazu's ship. Now Tazu's ship actually saved us all in one episode by ramming in to the large freighter. Now that saved our bacon by so much, but this ship was so amazing. I mean it looks so simple. But it was so fast, it had such a, like an immediate takeoff time, it burned me and Sage out of the water for that. But the only problem, it was quite lightly armed, it only had two miniguns and one rocket launcher, but it still made its mark on the series by taking out the larger green ship. Now, this is Sage's craft. Now, Sage has a very different style to us. He tends to build very blocky and very sort of square, but I really like this. It's, it's something, it seems like it's something from some sort of movie. It was heavily armed, it's got four miniguns, four rocket pods, and it was later refitted with this little pad on the front so it could actually save Henry from drifting far, far away. Now, at the back, it was nicely fitted with a little bit of an access port so you can store things in the back. And it's got two large thrusters followed by them, two small ones. It was a very good all-round ship and it still survived on to today. Now, moving on, this was actually a ship designed by one of our close friends called Bracca. And what actually happened was the, these ships were actually brought in with that massive green carrier on board. And Tazu managed to salvage one of them. And this is what he managed to do with it. He painted it white and gave it some red stripes so he didn't think it was a hostile. And it served him, once again, one episode before it got destroyed by ramming it into something. Um, now, if we continue moving on, we have the carnivore deconstructor and constructor, you could say. Basically, Sage designed this one once again, and he had the idea of having a ship that could just build up and destroy. And it was really good. It was it was really efficient. The engine power pack was really good. It was fast, mobile, movable, and you could also load supplies in. The only issue I noticed was, due to the thrusters being at the back like this, is when you connected it up to something, you accidentally burned it if you thrusted too fast. So we move on to the final ship. Now, this is Sage Cam. A lot of people ask questions about the Sage Cam. What is it? Well, basically, Sage Cam is Sage's way of doing special perspectives or building perspectives. So if you check out his channel, you'll see like upper building perspectives of different things. Now, this is a horrible ship to fly. It literally just acts as life support for, say, well, Sage Cam himself. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And if you've got any questions about our survival series, make sure to leave them in the description. And I'll see you next time.